gives you a detailed outline of how this you should be. This is the hinge plate, which is a normal dinner plate size. You're not forward on those toes, you're back on your heels. Welcome to the Bucks Live Well program, a health and wellness program presented by ETSU students for ETSU students. Today we will begin the eight week program with what is a healthy diet. My name is Jane. And I'm Anna. And we are senior nutrition students here at ETSU. In this presentation we will cover the dietary guidelines for a healthy lifestyle, the multiple food groups and how much you should be eating of each, and an introduction on how to identify healthy foods using the food label. Enjoying a healthy diet is not impossible if you keep three key items in mind. First, always include fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and fat-free or low-fat milk in your daily meal plan. Second, your diet should include lean meats, poultry, fish, beans, eggs, and nuts. Third, decrease your consumption of saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, salt, and added sugar. Okay, my plate is actually based off the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, the 2010, and those were created for ages two years and older. Um, and what the goal of the Dietary Guidelines is, is to help you live a healthier life by guiding you with how much of the food groups you're supposed to eat and how, um, how the nutrients are involved to make you live a healthier lifestyle. Um, the three goals for the dietary guidelines is to balance your calories, increase the foods to increase, and then the foods to decrease. As far as balancing calories, that just means portion control and pay attention to what size of the food that you're eating and how much of it you're eating. Um, the foods to increase, of course, is fruits and vegetables, and we want to make sure that half of our grains are whole grains and that we're choosing the low-fat, fat-free dairy options. And of course the foods to decrease would be those foods high in sodium and the high in fat. And then the big issue we have these days is soda. So we want to make sure that we're really consuming more water throughout the day instead of all those sugary drinks. The number of calories you consume is an important factor in determining your weight. Therefore it is important to balance calories to maintain a healthy weight. This can be done by increasing your fruit and vegetable intake slowing down and enjoying your food. We often eat too much when we are in a hurry or distracted by something else. Um, downsizing your portion is also a good way to cut calories a smaller, by using smaller plates and ordering the small size when available at the restaurants. Of course, it is always important to check the calorie content when you're going to be visiting a restaurant. You may be surprised at how much you're actually eating. We often underestimate the calorie content of our favorite foods and beverages. When you're looking at your plate, one half should be fruits and vegetables and the other half should be divided into protein and whole grains. Switch to fat-free or 1% milk. It is important to remember that these options provide the same nutrients with lower calorie options. Cut back on foods high in solid fats, added sugar, and salts. Some examples are cookies, pizza, cake, candy, and fatty meats. While these may be some of our college favorites, they should be enjoyed as occasional treats rather than everyday staples. In addition, consider drinking water instead of your favorite sugary drink or soda. My Plate is a new tool developed to help consumers choose healthier food options. As you can see, the My Plate icon emphasizes the fruit, grains, vegetable, protein, and dairy food groups as they should appear on your plate at home. Um, the first group on my plate we're going to talk about is fruit, so we're going to start building our plate. And I was going to show you an example. Um, my plate is actually based off a 9-inch plate. So this is a 10-inch plate, which is the normal dinner plate size. So throughout this presentation, really think about what size plate you're really eating off of. Think about when you're at home, what size plate, and especially when you go out to eat, the size of the plates they use these days are outrageous. So just keep in mind that all of this is based off a nine inch dinner plate. So we need fruit for many different reasons in our diet. I guess the old saying, eat an apple a day keeps the doctor away, really is true because fruits contain so many nutrients that we need in our diet to decrease those risks of chronic diseases and just make our body overall healthy. Um, the average adult is recommended to eat um, two cups of fruit a day. 
So these are all examples of what is a serving of fruit. You can see up there on the slide. And we don't necessarily have to eat fresh fruit. We can eat canned fruit, frozen fruit, dried fruit, and they contain all the same nutrients that the fresh fruit would contain. So how are we going to get these servings of fruit in our diet? There's easy ways. Um, a good reminder is just to keep fruit around. Keep it visible in your house. That way you see it and you're more likely to eat it because it's convenient for you. Um, we want to think about what kind of fruit you like. If you don't like bitter stuff, you might want to choose a sweeter fruit um, and things like that. But keep it a variety. You don't want to eat the same fruit every day because each fruit contains many different nutrients that our body needs. Um, and then, of course, we need the fruit for the fiber in our diet. And you want to make sure that you're incorporating fruit in different foods that you eat. Like for breakfast in the morning, if you like cereal, you could always cut up a banana and put it in your cereal or add it to your yogurt. And then you could even incorporate it in your dinner by putting pineapples on your meats or certain things like that. And then like I mentioned that fruits are easy to snack on so it's an easy way for on the go for college students. Now let's add vegetables to your healthy plate. Most vegetables are low in calories and are packed full of vitamins and minerals. Vegetables come in all shapes and sizes. You can eat them raw, cooked, fresh, frozen, canned, or in 100% vegetable juice. The average person should consume about two and a half cups of vegetables per day. So what is one serving of vegetables? Some examples include two cups of raw leafy greens, such as lettuce or spinach, one cup of cooked or raw vegetables, one cup of cooked dry beans, and one medium baked potato. However, it is important to remember that vegetables come in more colors than just green. Um, eating a rainbow of vegetable colors brings the most health to our diets. The life of a college student is very busy. However, there are fast ways to cook and eat healthy. Cook fresh or frozen vegetables in the microwave for a quick way to add vegetables to any meal. Be ahead of the game and cut vegetables in advance and store in prepackaged containers for ready-to-go snacking. And don't forget the freezer aisle. Frozen vegetables are quick and easy to use in your everyday cooking. Also, stock up on vegetables. If you have them around, you're more likely to incorporate them in your dinner plans. When choosing canned vegetables, make sure to choose the low sodium, reduced sodium, or no salt added options. Okay, the next group I'm going to talk about is the grains. Um, the average adult is, is supposed to consume six ounces of grains and we want to make sure that half of them are whole grains because there are two types of grains. You've got your refined and then you've got your whole grains. So we want to make sure that we're getting these grains because this is what provides us with energy. We get our fiber and then we're also decreasing those risk of chronic diseases like I mentioned earlier. So what constitutes as a serving of grain? As you can see listed on here there's different types of grains that we can get um, our servings from. And I really wanted to point out on the bottom the mini bagel. That constitute as one grain serving. Think about the bagels that we're getting at Einstein's and places like that. They're the really big bagels. Those constitute as four ounces of grains. So we also have to think about how many more calories we're adding and then what you're eating on the bagel. You could actually be adding more fat to it as well. So think about the different types of grains that you could incorporate in your diet throughout the day. There's many benefits, like I mentioned, to reduce the risk of certain diseases. It also reduces the risk of constipation. And then if you're eating more grains, it actually keeps you fuller longer because you're really increasing that fiber in your diet and you're staying fuller longer throughout the day. Um, when we go shopping, we want to make sure that we're looking for these ingredients in our foods. Labels can sometimes say wheat, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're 100% wheat or they're whole grain. So you really want to watch out for these things when you're going grocery shopping, looking on the boxes, making sure that you're really getting the right grains that you need in your diet. Next is the protein group. This includes non-animal sources and meat sources of protein. Everyone needs protein, however most Americans consume enough and some even more than they actually need. The protein food group includes meat, fish, poultry, eggs, soy foods like tofu or soy burgers, nuts, seeds, dried beans, and peas. 
The protein foods give us the building blocks for healthy muscle and blood. However, always choose the lean and low fat options. On average, five and a half ounces per day is what the average American should consume in protein. So how do you measure one ounce? For example, a three ounce portion of steak is the size of a deck of cards. Other examples of one ounce portions are a half a cup of kochu dry beans, one egg, one slice of sandwich meat, one tablespoon of peanut butter, one half ounce of nuts or seeds, two tablespoons of hummus, or one eighth cup of tofu. Vary your protein choices throughout the week. Try cooking with beans, nuts, soy, or even seafood. In fact, try substituting seafood for two nights a week. Choose ground beef that is at least 90% lean. Trim and drain the fat from your meat products when cooking and remove the skin from all your poultry. It is important to think small when it comes to protein sizes by ordering or preparing smaller hamburgers or smaller sized steaks. Use the nutrition food label in order to check the sodium content of the meats that you're consuming because some products can actually be very high in sodium. The last group on my plate we're going to talk about is the dairy products um, and then the average adult is to consume three cups of milk or three dairy products daily. Um, the dairy consists of milk, cheese, yogurt and we want to make sure that we're choosing these dairy products that are high in calcium, vitamin D, and then also potassium, which can help lower our blood pressure. For dairy, like I mentioned, there's milk, yogurt, cheese, um, and there's even soy products for those who are lactose intolerant. Um, this is what constitutes as a serving of milk, as you can see. And like I said, we want to make sure that dairy is good for us, but we want to make sure that we're not choosing those that are high in fat and high in calories because they can be good for us, but they can also add a lot of extra calories in our diet. So with that being said, we want to make sure when we're choosing milk products that we're skimming the fat. We want to make sure that if we're drinking whole milk that we need to switch to low fat or fat free and the same with the yogurts. We want to make sure that we're boosting that potassium and vitamin D and decreasing our sodium. So when we're looking for cheese products, we want to make sure that they're low in sodium. And then you can also incorporate dairy in your daily cooking. I know as far as recipes that call for sour cream, you could always use low fat or fat free plain yogurt to comp compensate for those calories so you could actually prepare a healthier meal using that. So in order to build our healthy plate, we need to make sure that half of our plate is fruits and vegetables. We want to make sure that we're getting half of our grains from our whole grains. We want to make sure that we don't forget the dairy because it's very important that we get it in our diet. We want to make sure that we're avoiding those foods with extra fat, so we're choosing low calorie snacks, we're not eating those high fat foods. Um, and also take your time when you eat, you're less likely to eat more if you take your time and slow down when you eat. And then I mentioned about the plate. Really think about what size plate you're eating on next time you eat and think about is that a nine inch plate or do I need to compensate for the size of the larger plate? Um, and then we can take control of our food. So we can take control of what we eat at home and even when we eat out, there's places now where you can choose the healthier options. So we wanna make sure that we're really focusing on the healthy diet and trying to take control of your own diet. Um, and then we all have a sweet tooth, so it doesn't mean you have to get rid of all your sweets. Just try to incorporate healthier sweets in your diet, such as fruit on the parfait, like I mentioned. Or if you like apples, you could always bake apples and put some cinnamon on it, and that'll satisfy your sweet tooth without adding all the extra calories. Now we'd like to do an activity to help gauge your knowledge of choosing healthy foods after watching this presentation. We'll start by showing you three separate photos of common breakfast items and giving you the opportunity to choose which you think is the healthiest option. And then we will explain the pros and cons of each product. For yogurt, we have YoPlay Original, Dan and & Light and & Fit, and Shabani Greek Yogurt. So which do you think is the healthiest option? The Light and & Fit. Well, the Greek yogurt is the nutrient, so I'm gonna go with it. Okay. First, pay attention to serving size. All of these yogurts are the same serving size, so they're easily comparable. The YoPlay Original, however, is highest in calories, fat, added sugar, and sodium. 
so you may want to think before you pick this up in the grocery store. The Dana and Lighten Fit is lowest in calories and added sugar and also fat free. This would be an excellent snacking option for individuals balancing calories on the go. And finally, the Chobani yogurt is fat free and lowest in sodium. Additionally, this yogurt is high in protein and food items with protein keep us feeling full longer and may be beneficial for those on an exercise regimen. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of cereals. As you can see on there, these are common breakfast cereals. And I want you to look at it for a second and then tell me which one you think might be the healthier option. I think Special K. Special K? Yes. Special K? Alright, let's see. First of all, on these, we want to make sure that we pay attention to the serving size. For the mini wheats and then for the Kashi autumn wheat, we would make sure that we counted out how many biscuits we were actually eating. As far as the special K, we could just get the three-fourths cup and measure it out pretty easy. Which all of these, um, the special K has the lowest amount of calories, but if you notice, it has the highest sodium. So if you were on a low sodium diet, you might want to watch out for that. So that could be a hidden thing with the special K. But the mini wheats surprisingly weren't that bad. You just have to make sure that you're actually counting out the serving size instead of just pouring the whole bowl till it's full. And then the same with the kashi. They were about the same in calories. And um, another thing, of course, with the mini wheats is you're going to have higher sugar content because they are the frosted kind. Next, we have the granola bar options. We have the Snickers Marathon Energy Bar, Nature Valley Crunchy Apple Crisp, and the Luna White Chocolate Macadamia Bar. So which do you guys think are the healthiest? The Nature Valley. Luna Bar. Okay. Again, notice that the serving size on all of these bars are different. Um, this, should take in, this should be considered when choosing your bar in the grocery store. The Snickers Marathon Bar might be inaccurately considered healthy. However, notice that it is highest in calories, sugar, sodium, and lowest in fiber. Therefore, it's more like a candy bar than an actual nutrition bar. The Nature Valley bars are lowest in calories, fat, and sodium. They provide adequate protein and fiber, and this would again be a good choice to go along with your Dan and Lighten Fit as you're eating breakfast on the way to class. The Luna Bar offers a higher fiber option in addition to containing moderate levels of protein, fat, and sugar. Notice the sodium is kind of high, so you may want to take that into consideration but this would also be a good breakfast option. So this completes our presentation on my plate. I hope you all have learned something that you can take home and really think about next time you're sitting down in front of that plate, what kind of food groups you're eating and how much of it you're eating. And I think next week you all are starting the physical activity part of the program, so they'll teach you some ways how to get active, but let's all remember to eat for the health of it.